Good morning, Jamie. Thank you for being here with us. Jamie, what are you doing here at Rio Plus 20? Well, this morning we were very pleased to launch a partnership that we have with the Global Environment Facility on implementing synergies amongst the Rio Conventions at the national level. And what that means is that we're helping countries to build their capacity to develop activities that address, at the same time, biodiversity, climate change and land degradation. And we're doing that through providing them with technical support and we're also going to be holding a capacity building workshop so that they can design activities on the ground with the local communities, uh, with the local governments to address these three very interrelated environmental issues. And how does those three uh, conventions link together? Uh, they link together very concretely, both politically and in terms of their impacts and their actions. Politically, um, all three conventions came out of the Rio process. Both the Convention on Biodiversity and the Climate Change Convention were born here in Rio. Uh, and we, we like to say that the Desertification Convention was conceived here. So the idea was put in place here and then it was adopted slightly later. So while we're celebrating the, the 20th anniversary of Rio, we're also sent, celebrating the 20th anniversary of these three Rio conventions. On the ground, uh, biodiversity, climate change and land degradation are very interrelated issues. If you look at, um, at climate change and biodiversity, for example, climate change is emerging as one of the greatest threats to biodiversity. They say with a uh, every degree Celsius increase in temperature, an additional 10 to 20 percent of species face increased risks of extinction. We're also in danger of hitting some tipping points. For example, uh, the, the temperatures of the ocean are causing coral bleaching. And if the in temperatures increase too high, then we will lose our coral reefs. When we lose our corals and our reefs, we lose the habitat for the fish. We use, lose the habitat for the birds that are eating the fish. Uh, and it's a cascading effect. At the same time, biodiversity is a very important resource for addressing climate change. Um, one of the climate change impacts is going to be on agriculture. There's going to be, in some places, more floods, in some places, more droughts, in some places, more pests. Well, the crops that we use today were developed from wild crops. And those wild crops still exist. That genetic diversity of crops still exist. And those wild crops often have characteristics like drought resistance, like resistance to pests, that we can use now to help us adapt to climate change. Likewise, if you look at the role of ecosystems, um, mangrove ecosystems, for example, can protect against sea level rise. Uh, they can protect against increased storm surges. So if we're maintaining those mangroves or if we're replanting mangroves where they once were but no longer exist then what we're doing is we're helping the communities that live across along the coast adapt to the impacts of climate change so climate change and land degradation are causing biodiversity loss but biodiversity conservation and sustainable use is just one of the solutions to addressing desertification climate change and securing our common future